In this video, we're going to look at proof by induction. Proof by induction is often compared to a row of dominoes. If you knock the first one over, all of the others will follow. With the proof, if it's true for a positive integer value n, it'll be true for the next one, for one after that, and so on and so forth, such that it's true for all positive integer values. When we're carrying out the proof, generally we have three to four steps. So depending on which textbook or which course you're following, it might be three or it might be four. In this video and subsequent videos, I'll be using four steps. The first step is what we call the basis case. We take n to be a small positive integer value, so it might be 1, 2, or 3. We sub that value in to the general statement we're given in the question and show that it holds true. So if it's n is equal to 1, we sub that into what we've got and show that it holds. That's called the basis case. We then go on to the second step, which is the assumption. We've shown it's true for n is equal to 1, we then assume it's true for n is equal to k, where k is a positive integer. That's the second step, the assumption. The third step is what we call the inductive step, or inductive phase. If it's true for n is equal to k, then it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. k plus 1 is simply the next integer on. We then generally use algebraic manipulation to show that the general statement holds true when n is equal to k plus 1. So we simply carry out that process and that's called our inductive step. Finally, we have a conclusion. We state that we've shown it's true for n is equal to k plus 1 if it's true for n is equal to k. We've shown it's true for n is equal to 1. Therefore, it's true for all positive integers by mathematical induction. So your conclusion will be somewhere along those lines. Again, different textbooks, different courses might present it slightly differently, but that's the main gist of it. In this video, we're going to work through a very basic example of the proof by induction, and then in later videos, we'll go on to some harder examples. The first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do it step by step, and I'm going to include a lot of information. Do check with your teacher or your textbook or your exam board exactly what they want you to write. Sometimes you can get away with writing very little. Sometimes the examiner or the textbook requires you to write a fair amount. So let's go ahead and look at one. What we're asked to do here is prove by the method of mathematical induction the following statement for positive integer values of n. So n belongs to the positive integers. What we've got here is a summation. We've got the sum from r equals 1 to n of r, which is equal to 1 half n, n plus 1. So here are the four steps, step 1, 2, 3, and 4. What we'll start off with is our basis case, and I'll take n to be equal to 1. All I'm going to do now is sub this into the left-hand side, sub it into the right-hand side, and show that those two things are equal. So n is equal to 1. Let's sub this in. So what we've got then is the left-hand side. So with the left-hand side, we're going to have the sum from r is equal to 1 to 1 of r. Quite clearly, if we sub in 1 here, we're going to get 1. Now let's look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side, I'm now going to sub in 1. So what we're going to have then, 1 half, and n is 1. Then we're going to have n plus 1, which is 1 plus 1. And that's going to give me 2. 2 multiplied by 1 multiplied by half is also going to give me 1. We can see that these two things are equal. And we write below, shown true for n is equal to 1. So shown true for n is equal to 1. So this is a basis case, and we've done that part. We're now going to do step 2, which is the assumption. We've shown it's true for n is equal to 1. So shown true for n is equal to 1. Shown true, let's just write this out, true for n is equal to 1. Now, this is the main part right here. We assume, and that's an important word in this part right here, assume true for n is equal to k. And remember, k is going to be a positive integer. Now, at this stage, you don't need the next part, but I like to write out such that, and we just put such that, the sum, and all I'm going to do is rewrite this with n is equal to k, such that the sum from r equals 1 to k of r is now 1 half, and then we're going to have k, k plus 1. So all I've done is rewritten that. Again, depending on which exam board you're following or which textbook you're using, it doesn't always uh, make you include this as such. I like to do it just to keep on top of things. 
Let's now go for the inductive step. So this is step three. What we want to do is now state if true, so let's write this here, if true for n is equal to k, then true, let's write this out, true for n is equal to k plus 1. So all this is, is the next integer on. So if k was, say, 5, this is 6. Now, at this stage, again, depending on which board you're with or which exam or whichever, whatever, you'll be asked to do different things, such that, and now what I'm going to do is show the left-hand side. Left-hand side, what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have now the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1. So before we just had k. Now we've got k plus 1 of r is going to be equal to. And often now, all we're going to do is just sub in small values of n just here. So if I sub in 1, I'm going to get 1. So just putting this here. Let's just put this in. If I put in 2, what's 2 going to give me? That's going to give me 3. If I put 3 in, uh, let's just put that in. So what's 2 going to be? 2 is going to be 3. If I put 3 in, I'm going to get 6. If I put 4 in, I'm going to get 10, dot, 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 dot. Remember, all we're doing is subbing the value in. Then we're going to have k, and then now we're going to have the next term. Now, all we're doing is subbing in r is equal to k plus 1. So we're going to have now plus k plus 1. So this is the summation right here. And again, some exam boards don't require you to do this bit. If it had been, for example, r squared, we would have had to put k plus 1 all squared and just sub that in. So this is what we've got. Now, the right-hand side, what we're going to have on the right-hand side is the following. The right-hand side, we've got this sum right here. So what we'll have then is 1 half k, k plus 1. But now we need to add this k plus 1 term because we're summing, instead of up to k, up to k plus 1. So what we end up doing is just adding that term on. Again, if this was k, if this was r squared, we would add k plus 1 all squared. So what we now need to do is use a bit of algebraic manipulation. So what I can say then is the following. I can say that the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r will be equal to this right here. And I'm just going to factor this. So taking a common factor now, what will we have? 1 half k plus 1. That's the common factor. So I've taken that out. So what we've got here is this k plus 1 taking the common factor out of 1 half k plus 1. That leaves me now k, and then if I consider now what I need to multiply this by, that's just going to be 2. So what we could now do is say from here that this is going to be 1 half, and then we're going to have k plus 1. Now, at this stage, you can leave it as k plus 2. Alternatively, we can have k plus 1, and then we would have now plus 1. So all I'm doing is simply showing that I've got now in here n is equal to k plus 1. Therefore, we can say n is equal to k plus 1. Again, do check with some examples with your exam board of whether they want you to do that. So what we've now shown is it's true when n is equal to k plus 1. So shown true uh, for, let's just write this out, for n is equal to k plus 1. So there we go. We've done our inductive step. We've used algebraic manipulation and simply summed a few of these terms. Often you can just go for this. You can simply say now that the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r is just this. You really don't need to do that, um, but I've just gone for completeness, as it were. OK, let's now go ahead and look at our last part, and this is the conclusion. So what we've done, we've shown true for n is equal to k plus 1. So let's write it here, and we can write to, find, uh, to finish this off. Shown true for n equals k plus 1 if true for n equals k. Shown true for n is equal to 1, so we write shown true for n is equal to 1, therefore true for all n, true for all n, and then we just simply write n is a positive integer by mathematical induction. And that would be your concluding statement. Mathematical, um, let's write this out, mathematical, that looks, uh, looks like I spelt it right, mathematical induction.
So there we go. That's our final conclusion. That's our statement. So there are four, the four steps. Basis case, we've taken a positive integer value n, we've made it 1, we subbed it in. We put it in the left-hand side, showed it was equal to 1, put it in the right-hand side, showed it was equal to 1. Of course, it doesn't have to be equal to 1. These two things just have to be equal. Shown true for n is equal to 1. The assumption, shown true for n is equal to 1, assume true for n is equal to k, where k is a positive integer, such that, and then simply sub in. We then carry out the inductive step. If it's true for n is equal to k, then it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. And then simply shown now the left-hand side, we've put these values in. Again, you're going to have to calculate a couple of these by simply subbing in 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. Then we've shown that the right-hand side with the new term, when we summed it, gives us that. Factored it, shown that n is equal to k plus 1. Gone on to our conclusion. Shown true for n is equal to k plus 1, if true for n is equal to k. Shown true for n is equal to 1, therefore true for all n, where n is a positive integer by mathematical induction. So there we go. That's a sort of complete approach to it. In the next video, we'll do a couple more examples, and then we'll go on to look at things like matrices. We'll look at uh, divisibility and also some basic recurrence relations. So a brief intro to proof by induction.